everyone, I'm Mind, and in this video I'm going to be comparing the different versions of the LEGO Ninjago Destiny's bounty that have been released over time. Here are the four different versions we're going to be looking at in this video. We have the Possession Destiny's bounty from 2015, the LEGO Ninjago Destiny's bounty from 2017, the Ninjago Legacy Destiny's bounty from 2020, and then finally the all-new Ninjago Dragon's Rising Destiny's bounty from this year, 2023. The new Destiny's bounty was just sent to me for review by the LEGO group, so you can go check out my full review of that on my channel right now if you want to see that. But the purpose of this video is to compare the actual builds of these sets, so I will not be going over minifigures in this video. I have four reviews of both of these up on the channel. However, these two I've not got to yet, though I will get to at some point. You also may notice I don't have every Destiny's bounty here. I'm missing the original 2012 bounty. I want to get it at some point, and when I do, I'll make an updated video. But yeah, I just never got around to getting that one, and it's quite expensive on the aftermarket. However, it's also pretty widely regarded as the worst bounty set, so personally, I didn't think it would make a huge difference not having it here. And then I'm also missing the 4 Plus bounty, which was released in 2021. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I have that set, I just don't know where it went. I was looking for it for this video. But that one's a 4 plus bounty, so it's obviously not as important as the big ones. So whenever I do update this video with a 2012 bounty, I'll make sure to include that one as well. But I thought it wasn't worth delaying this video to try to find that set. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's take a look at each bounty and see which one's the best overall. So we're going to go through each part of the bounty for each of the different variants. I'm going to be starting with the head right here. This is, of course, the head on the possession bounty from 2015. And this, in my opinion, is probably the worst dragon head we've ever gotten. I do like the giant telephone pole coming out the front. It does make the ship very large, but I don't know. It does have a unique look to it, at least. But yeah, the dragon head's just a little bit overwhelming. It's got like a runic design right there as well as like a drawn on dragon on the top of its head. But those are just sticker pieces and it just doesn't look as good as the other bounties. See, so yeah, it's creative at the very least, definitely stands out from the others. But personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Now taking a look at the front of the Ninjago movie bounty, this one I'm a bit more mixed on. This one is the biggest of all the Destiny's bounties that we've ever gotten. However, in my opinion, it's missing the most important feature of the Destiny's bounty, the big dragon head at the front. Instead, there's two smaller dragon heads and then like a little platform. I guess this is an easy way for characters to get on and off the ship, which like that is cool in theory. I don't know, I've always preferred the one big dragon head. The two, like they do look good. And I like the design of each of them individually. Personally, I've never felt they mesh the best with the rest of the ship. I think just one giant figure head would look better. Still though, that at least sets this bounty apart from the other one, so it's not the worst thing in the world. But if I was the designer, I would have done that differently. Then the legacy bounty has one brick built dragon head at the front, and in my opinion, this is the best dragon head of any of the bounties. This bounty is of course based off the original appearance of the Destiny's bounty back in season one of Ninjago. However, the original Destiny these bounty just used a giant molded dragon head, and I think this is just so much better. This dragon head's expressive, but still has a great shape to it. I especially love, like, the use of the robot arms around the eyes. It genuinely looks quite good, and there's a little bit of articulation to it. You can move the head up and down ever so slightly, and the mouth can also be hinged open too. But yeah, I think this is captured absolutely perfectly. This is what the head of the bounty should be, in my opinion. And then finally, here's the dragon head on the all-new Ninjago Dragon's Rising Destiny's bounty, and this one's a lot different, because the dragon figurehead is actually a full-size dragon. I guess I'll show this off now because I'm talking about the dragon head, but yeah, this dragon head's an entire dragon that can be removed. You flip up this section back here and the entire dragon can slide out. As a figurehead though, I think it works. Obviously, it doesn't look as good as the others, but I think the play feature trade-off is kind of worth that. I do like the printing on the front of the dragon's head for the eyes, and obviously the blue is a very new color scheme compared to all the other red dragon heads, so this is a fun way to mix things up, but as such, it just doesn't feel as iconic to me, so it's definitely not my favorite, but it's a fun alternate option. Now, we'll be taking a look at the full dragon in this video. You can go check out my full review of this set if you want to see that. But yeah, here's how it removes, and you can see without the dragon, the front of the bounty looks very empty. So yeah, I think with the dragon detached, this is obviously the worst bounty front, but with the dragon in there, I think it's probably the second or third best. Not sure if I prefer this one or the movie one. I think I might slightly prefer this one. So I'd say overall, in terms of the dragon heads, the legacy one's the best, and the possession one's definitely the worst. Now we'll move on to the next part of the bounties, the exterior, both like the display space on the top of those minifigures, as well as the design of the bounty around the sides. I'll be reversing the order we go through the bounties in each section just to make it easier on me, so I don't have to go put away the bounty every single time I start a new section. So yeah, continuing on with the all new Ninjago Dragons Rise, bounty. I think the sides of this one are actually pretty nice. It's all very sleek. I like the sort of wing design. And there's so few Lego studs here too. The only part I don't love are these great bits at the bottom. It kind of just feels like they gave up here. Because yeah, those colors don't match. There's just some random open studs and then some other colors shining through. That part doesn't look the best, which is a shame because the rest of this looks so nice. But yeah, I'm just not the biggest fan of that. I do like the sticker at the front that says Destiny's Bounty. And the anchors do look quite nice. However, I do feel they're some of the weaker ones and are also quite fragile and very easy to fall off the ship. This bounty does something kind of interesting where it has the support beam in the center, and then like this glowing blue energy inside it. I do like how that looks and it definitely sets it apart from the others, however I don't know if that makes it my favorite. Still though, the transition from that into the back section is super smooth. I love how there's even more of those glowing blue lights, and like the smooth red wing design continues back here too. And the gray underneath is done significantly better on the back half, because that just has a smoothness that goes with everything else. We'll get to the big thrusters later on in this video, but first we'll take a look at the back right here. A few flags hanging off which I do think look nice, but then we have these four giant blue thrusters back here. And the outside of the bounty on the other side is almost exactly the same. 
Another part I don't love is when looking at the front of the bounty from behind, it's actually very open and gappy, and that's weird to see because the back's connected on super smoothly, but the front just isn't. It's an angle that you're not going to see a lot of the time, so it's not like the biggest deal in the world, but I'm just not the biggest fan of that. The deck of this bounty does have a good bit of space. You can see this front section right here that lifts up to reveal a dragon underneath. There's a spot for two characters to sit and drink tea together, and then there's lots of other studs around that. Moving back, there's a few more studs in the support beam where you can pose a few more minifigures. And then finally in the back half of the ship, you can see here's the steering wheel, there's a little compass as well as a little telescope to look out, and lots of room back here too. It's definitely not the most spacious bounty, but there's room to fit pretty much as many figures as you'd want. Like, I think you could very easily fit, like, all six original Ninja Wu, Eren, and Sora, as well as Baby Ryu, and that's just in the exterior. Of course, there's interior space as well, and actually, there's one more section for the exterior you can see behind, like, this little building back here. There's actually a little bit of room to post figures at the back of the ship in this little three-wide section. Very happy to see that, because I think it's awesome just to post figures looking off the back of the ship. So overall, the exterior on this one's pretty solid. The actual sides do look good. There's a few weird spots, but I still like it. And then the actual minifigure display space is pretty solid as well. Next we'll come to the exterior of the Ninjago movie bounty, and this one I actually really like. It's very clearly not as bright and flashy as the Dragon's Rising bounty, there's a lot more brown going on here and not nearly as much red, but it almost makes it feel more realistic. Again, it's so accurate to season one of Ninjago and I love that, it feels so nostalgic. But I just love the texturing and everything too, like there's no awkward spaces anywhere here. Every single piece feels so deliberate. I especially love this section right here on the sides, the little Among Us pieces just add so much. And I love all the very textures textures and curves, the way it cascades down at the bottom. The way the ship rounds off at the front's really nice too. It feels very much like it's shaped how a real boat should be shaped. You can see the other side's basically exactly the same, and then if we turn around to the very back, there's no thrusters back here, rather we just have a little rudder. However, I really like the use of all these different archway pieces. And then the floor space here I'd say is solid. In this front section where the sails are, you can see there's quite a few studs to pose minifigures around. I also really like these guardrails at the sides, these are a really nice touch. Then we have this more center section where you can see I actually have all the legacy minifigures standing at the moment. However, I can remove them so you guys can see it up a little bit closer. And yeah, there's one of these giant great pieces right here, which unfortunately does restrict posability a little bit, because obviously you can't connect minifigures on the studs because it's a great instead. But there is a good amount of studs around the great. And then there's also this little spinning stud shooter cannon in the middle, which is a fun play feature. However, if you wanted to remove it, you can. And that just gives you even more room to display your minifigures. However, the steering wheel for this bounty is actually in the interior. So unlike the Dragon's Rising bounty, there isn't more figure space around the steering wheel, because that's combined with the interior section, which we will take a look at in a moment. But this bounty overall is a bit shorter than the Dragon's Rising bounty. So I think it does a good job of having enough space for like the size that it is, but I think the Dragon's Rising Bounty actually does have more space to display figures just because it is a bigger ship overall. There is a few studs around the side of the ship where I guess you could pose figures if you wanted to, but you can see it's not nearly as open as some of the other ships, and unfortunately you can't really pose a figure around the back. So yeah, while this is smaller than the Dragon's Rising Bounty and smaller than the Movie Bounty, which we're going to take a look at in just a moment, I think it does a pretty good job with the space that it has, and I think the actual exterior design of the body of the bounty is the best of any of them. Now coming back to the Movie Bounty, this one's of course the biggest of the bounties, so there's a lot here. Starting with the exterior, I mean, it looks good, definitely. It's probably my second favorite of the outside designs after the Legacy Bounty, but when comparing it to the Legacy Bounty, it does just feel a lot more simple. I do like the way it rounds off at the top, especially with, like, these large rounded pieces up here. That's really neat. These sandbags on the side have always been an interesting decision. Personally, I've never been the biggest fan of them because they're so easy to accidentally knock off, but I do have to admit they look good and add a lot more texture to the build. However, yeah, the base design here is a lot flatter than the Legacy Bounty. I would still say I prefer this to the Dragon's Rising Bounty because just like the Legacy Bounty, it's clear that this entire design is like very intentional, right? Like there's no weird or awkward or gappy parts. The design is just a bit more simple when compared to the Legacy Bounty. I do like this trim that sort of runs around the top though and serves as like guardrails for the main deck space. That looks quite good and is also very functional. I don't love how easy it is for it to move. I kind of wish it locked in place better, but that definitely isn't the biggest deal in the world. The back of this bounty is easily the best one there is just because it is so big. But yeah, you can see there's a rudder at the bottom, a little space up here to display some figures, sticker pieces that say Destiny's Bounty both in jargon and in English, and then there's even a little window all the way at the top and a stickered flag piece coming out the back. The outside of the bounty is basically the same on the other side, but yeah, it still looks great. And then in terms of space to display the minifigures on the deck, I mean, yeah, of course, this wins of all of them. It's the biggest bounty and it also has the most space. It's just tons of open studs. But it's even not just the studs, right? There's also just so much life here. Now, I may be missing a few things from this build, because I'm not going to lie, things have fallen off this set over the years. And I think I have most of it here, but if you notice anything missing, feel free to point it out in the comments. But yeah, the set's so big that I didn't have to dedicate all of its space to minifigure display space. So you got things like little flower pots and the side little lanterns, got a shovel and a broom to clean the ship, there's a fishing rod hanging off the deck of the ship, though I do believe there's supposed to be a second one here. In an ideal world, this is what the play space on every bounty should be. Just so much room to do whatever you want while still also looking quite good. I don't know what else there is to say about it, it's just fantastic. And then finally, the possession bounty is a product of its time. It's weirdly flat, which I never took issue with at the time, but now comparing it to the newer bounties, it was like, why were these so flat? It doesn't really make sense. So as such, there's not really too much to analyze around the sides. I do like 
like the use of the sort of fire here for texturing. That's kind of fun, and the stickered pieces are nice. But yeah, there's not much here. The parts that we do have are even kind of open and gappy. So I really don't have too much to say about this. You can see it's exactly the same on the other side too. Even down to this like open blue Technic pin right there, which just looks so ugly. I do like the use of these door pieces around the back for texturing. That's kind of unique. But yeah, I really don't have too much to say on this. This is very much a play set. And while I did think it looked awesome back in 2015, comparing it to the three newer ones, this is nowhere near on their level. And then in terms of minifigure display space in the deck, again, it's nowhere near the others. I do remember really liking it at the time because I felt like I could put all my minifigures in this set, but they definitely improved that with future versions because yeah, this hardly feels like it has any space. There is a lot more accessories and whatnot up here. You can see there's these two crates that open up and they can store weapons inside. I've got a katana in one of them and there's probably supposed to be another one in here. However, unfortunately, it looks like that might have been lost in time. There's also a crate with pirate hats, pirate swords, and ammunition. And that's to load up these stud shooter cannons, which is actually pretty cool. But yeah, moving back, there's not a ton of display space. I mean, there's quite a few studs. You probably could fit the whole ninja team here if you wanted to, but it's just not nearly as open as the other builds. Obviously, no back deck or anything on this one. So yeah, while it was fine for its time, it's easily the weakest of the four. I would say the strongest visual appearance for the exterior is the legacy bounty, and the strongest deck overall is the possession bounty. Next, let's take a look at the transformation features on each of the different bounties. Again, starting with the possession bounty, you can see there's these giant thrusters on the sides. These I actually think look quite cool. I like the use of the olive green. That's a very unique color. And the golden blades look great too. You can see that's exactly the same on both sides. However, I think this bounty actually has one of the nicest transformations. So if you pull out on this part of the build on the back, that'll actually transform the thrusters and make them go from sailing mode into flying mode. So let's take a look at how that happens. Just pull back like this, and there you go. It's a super smooth transformation, and I just love the movement that happens with that. Look at that, that's so cool. So yeah, as much as I've been calling the possession mount of the weakest of the bunch in this video, this actually holds up really well and is a super fun play feature. When extended, that piece you pull out reveals a little turret, and it's loaded with spring-loaded shooters with harpoons on the end. These can obviously be rotated back and forth if you want, and if you push down on them, they will of course shoot out. The other major part of the transformation is the sails, and I think the transformation on this bounty is alright. I'm not the biggest fan of the shape of the sails, because in all the other bounties, the sails are meant to look like the sails on an actual sailboat, but on this bounty, they're like permanently flat and facing towards the sky. There is still a bit of a transformation with them, though. You push down this piece, and they move outwards. And yeah, that just doesn't feel as dramatic as some of the others. I will say, this transformation feature doesn't work as well for me as it once did. I think that's just a product of the set being really old. I've had it for, what, eight years at this point? So some of the mechanisms just aren't as smooth as they once were. But even when this is brand new, I don't know, I never found it to be as cool as some of the others. This is a little technical build of the base, which actually helps to lock the cells in place, which I do actually like that. But yeah, I'd say the overall transformation is quite weak. This big disc piece in the center with the dragon on it, though, is an exclusive printed part of this set, and that does look amazing. It's easily the best part of these cells, but unfortunately, yeah, I don't have too much else to say on them. Now, coming back to the movie bounty, the transformation feature is actually my biggest criticism with this set, because while so much of it is so beautiful, the transformation just feels very much like an afterthought, and that's disappointing to see, because in my opinion, the transformation is what makes the bounty the bounty, but yeah, it is hardly here at all. So the big thrusters on the back that all the different bounties have, I mean, they are here, but it's just these tiny little wing pieces, and it's like hardly a transformation at all. It goes from like up here to down here. These are meant to be huge, significant parts of the ship, with giant thrusters coming out of them, but no, there's no thruster here. It's just like little tiny wings, and that's all there is to them. It's the same thing on the other side too, of course. And then the sails, I mean, they look great. I like the giant dragon that goes across the first two, and then we have Sensei Wu's symbol at the back right there. The posts holding them up are done super well too. I like the little flags and lanterns hanging down. And I even like the smaller flag at the top right there. But the biggest issue with these is they don't transform at all. It's not even like with the thrusters where they did a little bit of something. Like, no, these are just permanently stuck in place like this. Which, don't get me wrong, makes for a really cool sailboat. However, that's not what the bounty is supposed to be, in my opinion. Like, what the bounty is is a sailboat that turns into an airship. This, though, I don't really see how this vehicle's meant to fly because the sails don't go up, the thrusters are hardly anything. So as beautiful as the set is, it's a beautiful dragon and ninja-themed sailboat. It's not really a bounty, in my opinion, because, like, the defining feature that makes a bounty a bounty just isn't present here. I can excuse that because the rest of the set is so good and one of the best bounties ever, but man, especially after seeing how the Legacy Bounty does it, it's a shame that we just didn't get any transformation at all here. So now actually coming to the Legacy Bounty, the thrusters on this one are great. There are these giant wings on the back of the vehicle exactly as they're supposed to be, and I love the shaping on them too, it's super sleek. This rounded part of the center adds some nice texture, and I really love how there's actual mechanical thrusters underneath, which you can actually see when you look from the back. You might see this as just like open and exposed technique, but I don't know, in my opinion, it works for this build because this is meant to be the very mechanical part of the ship. From the outside, the thrusters look like wings, but from the inside, they're actual mechanical thrusters. And you can see they're actually designed to move in tandem with one another. When you move one up, the other goes up with it. And here's how it looks when you fully transform them into their flight mode. 
There's a secondary part of this transformation too. When you move the thrusters down to the back, these smaller thrusters come out the front of the ship. That's a very small thing, but it's so cool to see because I'm pretty sure that exact thing happens when the bounty transforms in the show. It just shows how much care and love was put into this set. And yeah, I think it's absolutely perfect. It might be my favorite of the different bounty transformation features. And then the sails in this one are good, honestly. I really like them. The actual design on the sails is straight out of Ninjago season one. And the transformation here is very simple. You push down on this little part of the back and they flip up. There's really not much to it. It's simple, but it's so effective. They lock in place very well and I also love how pretty everything looks right like it's not just a ton of exposed technic here there's a bit of technic but you can see they use this giant post piece they use like lego chain pieces it's a very smart way of doing everything and it works incredibly nicely if you do it fast enough too the cells actually make a little sound like man that is just so much fun and also just looks great I could not be happier with that overall transformation then coming to the Dragon's Rising Bounty, I actually really like the thrusters on this one. They do a good job of making them similar to the iconic thrusters of the Legacy Bounty, while still giving them their own identity and making them do their own thing. For one, you can see there's more of that trans blue energy out the front, and that's of course the actual thruster, right? You point that downward and that'll propel the ship upward. However, those are actually double-sided, so there's actually a thruster on the other side too. So I think the idea is it makes the bounty omnidirectional, right? It can fly in either direction. And then because the thruster itself also spins, there's just so many different options. The thrusters on each side move independently, they're not connected to each other like they were in the Legacy Bounty, unfortunately. Unfortunately. However, I think that's perfectly fine. There's still a huge range of motion there. And if you're curious, there's how they look when they're properly transformed. I think these are great, honestly. While I don't like them as much as the ones in the Legacy Bounty, it's pretty darn close. They do a great job of both looking good and being a fun play feature and also working just in the world, in universe. And then the sails in this bounty are similar to the ones of the Legacy Bounty slash the original bounty. However, obviously the color scheme's a lot different with a dark red base and then like bright orange on top of it. It's definitely a very different look. However, I like that they did try to mix it up. I do, of course, prefer the look of the original sails just because I'm more nostalgic for it. But I am very happy they decided to switch things up. It definitely helps this build feel more unique. And the transformation feature here is very similar to the one the Legacy Bounty, just a little bit worse. You spin this thing on the top rather than pulling the bit at the bottom, and the cells open up. I feel like they don't open up high enough. It's not like that dramatic of a change. It's super satisfying to do with the Legacy Bounty, and it's just kind of whatever here. Still, though, I would easily say this is the second best for the sail transformations, because obviously the movie bounty doesn't have one at all. And I do like this one better than the transformation feature on the possession bounty. And then the post that holds the sails up is not nearly as nice looking on this one. It uses a lot of tech pieces and as such feels a lot more mechanical and that does fit with the vibes of this bounty like this bounty is a lot more high tech than the original slash legacy bounty but I don't love the super high tech look I much prefer the look of the other one so when it comes to the transformation features with the sails of the thrusters I would say the legacy bounty definitely wins though honestly I would give the possession bounty second place when it comes to the actual transformation of the thrusters just because it's so fun in that build but in terms of looks and transformation combined I would say the dragon's rising bounty is the second best and then the worst is obviously the movie bounty because the thrusters barely exist and the sails don't have a transformation at all so while the ship does look good overall, that's obviously its weakest point. Finally, let's take a look at the interior of the different bounties. We'll be taking a look at the interior space in both like the hull of the ship as well as these little buildings at the back that each of the bounties have. So starting here with the Ninjago Dragon's Rising bounty, unfortunately there's no interior space at the front of the ship because all of that space is used to store the dragon inside. However, they more than make up with that with the interior in the back of the bounty because this is actually incredible and might just be my favorite interior. I do have to take a look at the interior of the movie bounty again, which we'll see in just a moment. But yeah, if we remove the building from the back right here, you can see in a little bit and there's just so much open space you've got beds for both Aaron and Sora lots of different accessories all around such as like a TV with a video game console a chalkboard some weapons but then there's also just tons of studs to pose minifigures this is a great living space for Aaron and Sora without feeling cramped at all and you could probably display a few other minifigures in there too if you wanted to because there's just so much room additionally if you wanted to remove some of this stuff like the beds and the weapon stands you'd get even more room in here but yeah this truly feels like it's designed for play while also just looking so good it's the perfect combination in my opinion there's so much space but it's filled to the room with accessories and also just looks great too. Yeah, I don't think I could be happier with this. Then this building at the back uses a bright orange and light blue color scheme, which is very different from the other bounties, but honestly, I think it's a good way to mix things up. I like the big window that it has around the back as well as the smaller ones on the side, just makes it feel a lot less enclosed. And then the black roof at the top is similar to the design that you see on other bounties, but I think it looks good and helps keep things recognizable. This roof can, of course, also be removed so you can see the interior a little bit better. And you can see inside this building, there's actually a good bit of space. It's certainly not nearly as detailed as the room below it, but it's got everything it needs. And I like how it's decorated on the wall with like the swords and little references to the show and there's a good number of studs here too i'm pretty satisfied with this and then the roof on the highest level also opens up and there's a bit more space in there and you can see this is actually a little dog house or more specifically a dragon house for baby ryu the baby dragon that comes in the dragon's rising sets there's a little doorway at the front for baby ryu to actually crawl in and there's a very similar one around the back too 
Overall, I think the interior on this bounty is great and one of the highlights of the set in my opinion. But now let's take a look at the same sections on the other bounties. Coming back to 2020 with the Ninjago Legacy bounty, the interior space here is definitely the weakest part of this set. Unfortunately, the machinery for the transformation feature actually takes up most of the front of the hull right here. So as such, the only real interior in the hull is below this grate right here. It's very easy to remove this entire section from the ship. And looking inside, I mean, what you get in here is fine. There's two clips on the walls, one of them holds a training dummy and the other one's empty. There's a little crate at the back to hold accessories and whatnot, but that's about it. I do like the steps to get up to the upper level, that's a fun touch. But yeah, this area really feels more like storage space than anything. Because especially comparing it to how detailed the interior was on the Dragon's Rising bounty, there just really isn't all too much going on here. I do still appreciate this as a way to store figures, because it is still a fairly large area. However, I just kind of wish there was a bit more going on in here. Then coming to the little building at the back, I think the design here is really cute. Again, it feels pulled straight from the show. The use of like the bar pieces for texturing was a smart decision. And I adore all the shaping on the roof, like the corners pointing upwards, the little bubble window at the front right here, I remember that from the show and that's captured so well here. Unfortunately, the set is not perfectly in minifigure scale, so while in the show the roof was another layer where like figures could pose and whatnot, that's not the case with the set at all. However, despite being downscaled, it does still look nice, which is the most important thing. Just like on all the other bounties, this part does disconnect, however, it's a little bit different because it leaves the floor behind. And here's how the bounty looks with that section removed. You can see here's the steering wheel to actually control the bounty, there's two stickered button pieces on the sides of that, there's also a little stickered computer screen piece, and hidden underneath there's an orange katana. That removed section can then further have its roof removed, and then this part actually folds open, which is quite unique, and I actually think it looks really nice in here. Those pillars look great, you've got lots of different weapons, such as Lloyd's sword, a few silver katanas, as well as a Psy, some text written in jargon in the back. Unfortunately, when this is actually connected to the bounty, you don't really see this all too often, but I do quite like the options there to disconnect it, and this kind of just makes a nice backdrop for your minifigures if you want. Now the roof section, while it is too small to hold minifigures, there is still a little bit of something in here. If you open this up, you can slide this piece out right here. You can see it's got a couple of clips on it, including a golden katana on the side, and this is actually just meant to be a little crate. You can see it's got like this stickered wooden paneling on it, and if you pop those wooden panels off, there you can see there's two silver shurikens inside. So yeah, as much as I love the Legacy Destiny's bounty, the interior is definitely the weakest part. Still though, I don't think it's bad by any means, it's just not as good as some of the others. The Dragon's Rising bounty definitely does a lot more with its interior space though, which is something I do appreciate about that one. Then of course, next looking at the movie bounty, the interior here is crazy, there's so much here. The building on the back of this one is absolutely massive, like there's a proper full interior even inside this, but then there's also a ton of room in the hole of the ship. So we're actually going to be going from the top down with this one just because it's a bit easier to do it that way. Starting at the very top level, the set uses like these garage door pieces in tan to be the roof of the ship, and that's very creative, but it actually works quite well. And you can see that you can very easily fold them up to get access inside. This topmost level doesn't have a ton going on in terms of actual detail. I do like the little railings on the side to allow characters to look out. There's also a table with a sextant and a little map. There's also golden windows at the back to allow some light in. But of course, the main part of this upper level is the steering wheel. They just use the big classic Lego Pirate steering wheel piece and there's a little compass up top too. And then looking in from the other side, you can see, yeah, there's not a ton else here aside from the fact that there's just lots of studs so you could probably fit the entire ninja team on this upper level, which is really impressive. It just shows you the scale of this ship. But yeah, it looks really good. However, this part of the ship's not the most packed with details. Now coming down a little bit, you can see there is actually a ladder to get from the upper level to the base floor. That's a small thing, but it's nice to see. I do love how everything looks on the side. These stickered pieces with like the bamboo art on it looks great. And turning it to the other side, you can see everything's very similar there. But then we have this giant doorway into this big main interior section. And to get a better look at that, we're actually going to remove this entire thing. This also gives us access to the interior in the hull of the ship, but we'll take a look at that in a moment. I just want easier access to this part of the build for right now. So here's the entire building section removed, and now I'll also remove the upper layer as well to let some more light in. And here now you have a better look inside. You can see there's a flag out front with Blue's logo on it, and there's a scroll on the inside which also has that same logo. There's quite a few different jumper pieces in there, which makes it very easy to post figures if you wanted to. And then the walls are just covered with all different types of accessories. You can see there's a crossbow, like three different weapons and a crate right there, a little training dummy, and then some katanas and a sword holder. I think this is awesome because it serves two purposes, right? It's massive and it's got all those jumper pieces, so it's a super easy way to store figures. You could probably fit the entire ninja team in here if you wanted to. But then it also serves as like a little training dojo for the ninja. Just like the inside of the Dragon's Rising bounty, I think this does a good job of balancing space with detail, and the end result's really good for both play and for display. I'm very happy with it. And now finally, moving to the interior and the hull of the ship. Here's that first section which was underneath that building. However, there is a second section too in this build. If we pull up on these crates right here, we can remove another set of plates, and that reveals the rest of the inside. Starting with the part underneath the building though, you can see there's a little bed right here. I believe this is meant to be a bed for Sensei Wu. And then the walls are just covered with tons of references to the Ninjago show. There's like a reference to every single season, as well as just some bonus weapons and whatnot on the wall. You got size, one of these larger swords, the hilt of 
the gin blade from Skybound. There's an anachondrite cultist helmet on the bedside, as well as a letter and a quill. Then we have a stickered photograph of all the ninja in their original designs, as well as Garmadon's helmet. Then you can see there's a bit of a doorway that leads into the next section, and this section's a lot of similar stuff. You can see there's a bit of a bathroom right here with toilet, a sink, and then like some toilet paper on the wall. And on the other side, it's more references and weapons and whatnot. We have an arrow blade from Possession, the armor of one of the Vermilion from Hands of Time, and then also just two golden shurikens to use as a weapon. Yeah, this interior is very spacious, but honestly, I think I prefer the interior on the new Dragon's Rising bounty. Because while obviously the ship is big and it has the most space, I think the Dragon's Rising bounty does a better job of using its space, because there's really not a ton in here. It's just kind of a bed and then a bunch of stuff thrown on the walls. The inside the Dragon's Rising bounty, though, it feels like characters could actually be living there. This, not as much. Like, it's cool, don't get me wrong, I still really like this. But yeah, I think I honestly might slightly prefer the Dragon's Rising bounty in terms of interior. I think it just uses its space better. Overall, though, the movie bounty is the bounty with the most interior space, and I think when it comes to the interior, the legacy bounty was definitely a big step down from this one. However, the new Dragon's Rising bounty feels like a good return to form. But yeah, of course, everything in this set's quite good. And then finally, looking at the possession bounty, this will be a lot quicker because there's just simply not as much space. Because we can't go into the hull of this ship because, I mean, it's super flat. There really isn't a hull of this ship to go into. So really, the only interior space is on the building at the back. The actual design of the building looks alright. I do like some of the angles, such as, like, on the roof. And the use of, like, these giant black blade pieces is creative, but yeah, this definitely is not as pretty as some of the others. There is a little play feature in the roof where you could slide out this section right here, and it's, like, this little lab for Nia, and it's got, like, this little bike in here. And I mean, that's cute for play, but I don't know. It's nothing all too interesting in my opinion. It's definitely fun, but it might detract from the look of things a little bit. I definitely prefer the way future bounties do things. And there's a look into the bounty with that removed. You can see there's like a mouse getting some cheese in the rafters. That's kind of funny, actually. I do like that. But then if you want better access, you can actually hinge this entire roof section upwards, and this gives you a better look inside. You can see there's three computer consoles, two seats for characters to sit, and then lots of other studs around it. Honestly, this is still a good bit of space, especially for the time. Like, I remember when the set came out, I was so impressed that I could fit like all of the ninja characters just in the interior of the ship. I do think it's the worst inside of all the bounties we looked at in this video, but that doesn't make it bad by any means. It's just one of the simpler ones and doesn't have as much space as some of the others because there is only one room. But yeah, don't take this as me saying this is bad because this is still pretty solid. It was just all done way better later on. And then finally, to end this video off, here's some size comparisons between the different bounties. For example, here's the movie bounty versus the Dragon's Rising bounty, and you can see they're actually about the same length. The movie bounty is obviously a bit wider, and it's also a bit taller too. But yeah, in terms of length, they're actually quite similar. The movie bounty might be a little bit bigger, but I was kind of surprised to see that they were so close. Then here's the Dragon's Rising bounty next to the Legacy bounty. You can see the Dragon's Rising bounty is actually significantly longer. However, a big part of that is that support beam in the center. And just like the movie bounty, the Legacy bounty is a little bit taller than the Dragon's Rising bounty. But there you go, there was four of the LEGO Ninjago Destiny's bounty sets compared. Overall, I'd say my favorite is probably the Legacy bounty, because while the weak point is definitely the interior and it's not nearly as good as the other bounties, the exterior is just perfect in my opinion. It's got enough space to display minifigures that looks just like it does in the show, the play features are satisfying and fun and also accurate, so I honestly just love it a lot. I wish it was a bit bigger, like if we had the Legacy bounty and the scale of the movie bounty, that would be perfect, but for what we have, I'm still pretty satisfied. The movie bounty is obviously amazing, my biggest criticism with it is it's just not the best bounty, it's an amazing LEGO set an amazing pirate ship, but it's not the best bounty we've ever gotten because the transformation features just aren't great, and I don't like the two heads at the front of the ship either. The new Dragon's Rising bounty, though, I will say holds up well. I think I do still prefer the movie bounty to the Dragon's Rising one. However, if you don't have the movie bounty or the Legacy bounty and you really want to get Destiny's bounty, I don't think you'll be disappointed with the Dragon's Rising one, because in my opinion, it has the best interior of any of these, and the rest of it's certainly not bad by any means. Looking back at the Possession bounty, it's kind of amazing how far these sets have come, and each of them is both unique and also incredible in their own ways. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of all these sets in the comments below. Which bounty is your favorite? Which one's your least favorite? And how do you think that they could be improved? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!